right, my laddies. Today is going to be a very different type of video. Today we are going to be re uh, giving a top five list of our top favorite iconic horror movie characters. Disclaimer, this is not who we think are the most popular of horror movie icons. We had a debate about that earlier. These are just our personal favorites in Halloween horror. Anything that could possibly to be dubbed as a Halloween movie uh, characters that we enjoy. So. If you want to see the list of the top five uh, horror movie characters given to us by you guys, leave it down in the comments below and then we'll take into account like all of the different submissions we get. Yeah. Alright, so let's start. Alright, so number five for me is a very special movie. Uh, I think it's a very special movie for Drake as well, just because of how I think it's changed both of our lives, because without that movie, we wouldn't be here. And that the is channel, yeah. the Spider-Man from the horrors of Spider Island. Now, this is a German movie that was produced in the 1950s, but wasn't released until the 60s. It had two different versions. One of them was in the form of a porno, and the other was a horror movie. We watched the horror variant. This movie is based on these, uh, I'm pretty sure they're like these showgirls and their manager, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. They go, they get on a plane and they're flying over to some strange island. For some reason they're in like Japan or something when the movie starts. Unless really? they're in New York. I feel like, I don't know, they're in a weird place. Or they're Germany. flying somewhere. Germany. Yeah, I guess it would be Germany. But, um, it's, it's just a, such a good movie. They go, their plane crashes in the middle of the ocean and... Um, there's these giant spiders who attack Spider-Man and he turns into a spider and it's just so fun to watch. I think it's it's probably the best funny stupid movies we've watched. And we've tried we've always been trying to find a movie that can replicate the amount of enjoyability that it had. Yeah, so far there hasn't been a movie that has captivated the spirit of this channel like that. So, yeah. But I will correct myself, the original movie that had that did motivate us was Killer Clowns from Outer Space, but it was not obviously the first one. Done. Yeah. Um, my number five is The Nun from The Conjuring series. Um, so The Nun is the only, mo the only uh, movie from The Conjuring series that I've ever seen, which should take into account of how much I enjoyed it. It seemed like a lot of people who were into The Conjuring series didn't really enjoy it that much, um, but I liked it. I think the nun, the reason why I put nun at number five is because I think that the nun easily has the best presence in any horror movie that I've ever seen. It's very, very creepy, very eerie, got very mysterious kind of feel kind of to it, till towards the end, towards the end kind of overused a little bit, things like that. Um, but in the beginning, and for the majority of the movie, easily the best presence I've ever seen in a horror movie ever. I saw it twice in theaters, and I also have watched it here one time as well, so a total of three times, which is, I think, the most I've ever seen a horror movie, actually. I uh, so, yeah. have to agree with him on the fact that the the nun is portrayed so well throughout the movie, and then at the end, it just throws it in your face. Yeah, way too much. But it's a, I feel like it's still a good character. Yeah, yeah. All right, number four. This one's also very special, mostly because he's right behind us. Number four, Gilman from Creature from the Black Lagoon. Hey, will you look at that? There he is. Now, Gilman is very special because I think that is the closest we've gotten to finding a character that the movie was, and that the channel was founded in. He's the closest because he's a creature who's human-like and wants a whole bunch of females. But ladies, man. <laughs> But yeah, Creature from the Black Lagoon, released in the 1950s in 3D. It's 
innovative for its time. Very innovative. Actually, this was near the end of the 3D cycle, believe it or not. Yeah, it's the 50s. Interesting. But, uh, yeah, Creature from the Black Lagoon, it takes place in the Amazon rainforest. It has these people who are going to go to this lagoon in the rainforest, and they wait up the creature. And then it is mad, and then it wants Julia Adams for some reason. <laughs> But yeah, that's really all I'm gonna say on Gilman, because I feel like it's not our only Gilman mention on this list. Number four is for me Sam from Trick or Treat. Oh, such an iconic. Um, the Trick or Treat movie itself was pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. Um, what made it was Sam. Sam, the the character in it, easily made the movie what it was. He had such a funny, almost funny presence at times. Super, just very like, every time you saw him, you got super, I got, we both really liked seeing him. Uh, he was just, you know, he really made the movie and really did, you know, made it what it was. Um, what I didn't like was towards the end when they unmasked him. Oh, yeah. really, really wish they didn't do that, but they did. Other than that, I don't really have any complaints with Sam, and I really hope they make a second one and have more of them. We're not the biggest fans on pushing stuff out through sequels, but I think we can both agree that Trigger Treat we, we would like to see Sam. Definitely a necessity. Yeah. Which it is, in, it's in development right now. So, it'll be, whenever that comes out, theater movie. Theater, yeah. yeah. Theater is a view. Maybe even a poster on the wall at some point? Maybe we have. Room, you know, switching and out as posters. And we have another wall. Yeah, another wall. Many walls. All right. Number three for me is David from Lost Boys. Um, David is got a very. First of all, I'm not much for mullets or. There's a lot of in-style things that I feel are very cheesy or very just not cool when it comes to the 80s, like fingerless leather gloves, mullets, things like that. Uh, David has all these things, but still has a very powerful presence whenever he's in. He's a very captivating, charismatic leader. He um, just seems like a very cool guy, very easy to follow. You know, he's a vampire too for for that's and that's what puts him on this list is that he's a vampire and uh yeah, that's what qualifies just, Yeah, that's what qualifies him. Um but overall he's just like a I just love it and Kiefer Sutherland Kiefer just Sutherland. did really really great in the movie. I shoved Kiefer Sutherland down Drake's face and now he I think I, he appreciates it. I love Easily one of my, I would say probably one of my favorite performances in any movie. In all honesty, I feel like any movie that makes you go and look at the actors' in other movies. Yeah, we have another piece for a Sutherland movie. We're actually very excited to see it yeah. <laughs> in October. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. But um, actually, by this point, this movie, when this is released, we haven't really reviewed the Lost Boys yet. Oh yeah, but Keith for Sutherland. Yeah, and that's why he made my number three. Are you ready for my number three? Yeah. All right, number three for Benny Boy. Jason Voorhees. Now, it's a very generic horror movie icon to pick. Um, but the thing that really gets uh, gets me to like Jason Voorhees over most other characters is the Friday the 13th game. I feel like it is one of the best fan services to the character that could have been done for any horror movie. Uh, Jason is such an iconic person. I mean, he wasn't even in the first Friday the 13th movie, for crying out loud. But... He didn't even get his iconic look until the third one. Yeah. He's just been so iconic. Like, most of his movies have been garbage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they've been garbage. <laughs> but the Jason I want to give the most credit to is Friday the 13th Part 4, which we have seen... But the review will not be up until December. Uh, Friday the 13th of December this year. Uh, so be ready for that. But we need to continue working on that. Yeah. But Friday the 13th Part 4, one of my favorites. 
uh, in connection with Drake's number three pick, uh, Corey Feldman, who's also in the Lost Boys with Kiefer Sutherland, he is based. I think Corey Feldman's basically the main character. Stand by me. And Stand by Me too. Yeah, we've seen that. <laughs> um, oh yeah, Kiefer Sutherland's in that yeah. too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, Jason Voorhees. Really good character. I don't know why I'm doing hand motions because this is all audio. Trump. <laughs>
Uh, ben enjoys him as well, obviously. Very That's why much he's so. up here. Um, his movie was great. I really liked the... It's not my favorite horror movie of all time, obviously. Um, the date that it came out definitely is in consideration. But I, I am a person who really likes classic things, I guess per se, the, uh, the aesthetic of classic things and um, the atmosphere that they kind of give, I really enjoy. And Gilman is one that I think is really awesome. Uh, I definitely feel like he, for the most part, he's on the back burner of a lot of minds when it comes to universal monsters, in my opinion. The oh big universal monsters is Dracula, Frankenstein, Werewolf, and even the Bride of Frankenstein I feel like sometimes even surpasses Gilman in popularity. But if you really do know the universal monsters, you really do realize how iconic he is. There's a, something about that is that Gilman is actually considered to be the final universal monster to come out of the... He might have something to do with Of it. the golden era of monsters. Because everything between... Uh, we're gonna say at the beginning of silent. I know of sound films. Dracula to Creature Walks Among Us is considered the golden age of horror movies, and Gilman's right at the end. There was only there was four movies like Creature from the Black Lagoon, Revenge of the Creature, and then Abbott and Costello meet. I think the Wolfman, and then it was the Creature Walks Among Us, and then that was it for. Yeah. The Golden Age, which that could have some, that could have put a good like a damper on how popular he could have been. Yeah. So I realized our number ones and number fours are flip flopped. My number one is Sam. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. So obviously, trick or treat, Sam. He kind of mentioned it. We both have a love for Sam. I feel like if there's anyone that almost has like the same amount of love from each of us, the two characters. <laughs> that we both really enjoy are Sam and Gilman. Which, as you can see, they both made our list. Yeah. We didn't really communicate when we made our lists either, so... Yeah, I actually kind of made mine like 15 minutes ago, but I'm pretty set on what it is. But Sam is just so iconic. Uh, well, he's not so iconic. He's not as iconic as anyone else we probably mentioned on our lists. Yeah. He's a, one of the newest. Yeah, his movie came out in... 2007. Well, actually 2007. came out in 2009, but it was advertised in 2007. Okay. Um, but you can see he's got a little bit. He, I feel like gross. he's picked up more attention over the years. I feel like as old, his mask is really iconic. Yeah, he's got. I feel like the longer, uh, like uh, ten years ago, I wouldn't have known who Sam was. Oh yeah. But I feel like it's just progressively gotten bigger and bigger, and people are loving the movie more and more. But yeah, those are our top five favorite horror movie icons. 